the scary gluconeogenesis monster, here to kick you out of ketosis. Too much protein ruining your keto lifestyle and making it so that you're not in ketosis anymore. All right, it's time to give you some facts on this entire situation. Because way too many people are walking around thinking that if they have that extra bit of protein, they're gonna get knocked clear out of keto and the fat loss is gonna come to a screeching halt. Doesn't quite work that way. There is some truth to it, but let's break down the facts and give you a clear, clear knowledge of what's going on in the body. Hey, if you haven't already, make sure you hit that subscribe button. There's brand new videos coming out every single Tuesday, Friday, and Sunday at 7 a.m. Pacific time, and a bunch of other videos in between as well. Also, hit that little bell so you can turn on notifications so you know whenever I go live. And make sure that you check out highleat.com for the latest and greatest in the apparel that I'm always wearing as well. All right, so gluconeogenesis. Essentially, we have to understand what is actually happening in the body with this first. Gluconeogenesis is a completely natural process and it's where your body is making glucose or blood sugar from protein or lactate. It's literally just making blood glucose from other substrates other than glucose. So when you're on a ketogenic diet, it would make sense that because you're not eating carbs, you're not eating glucose, your body has to get it from somewhere else. So it's very, very, very important that we know, first and foremost, that the body always needs blood sugar. Okay, when you go on a keto diet, your blood sugar levels don't go to zero. Okay, they still stay elevated. A lot of our cells still need blood glucose. So gluconeogenesis is simply a process for the body to create glucose from a means other than glucose. That's all it is. Now this is a metabolic pathway that is occurring specifically through the liver and through the kidneys. And although for the most part it stays at a constant rate, it does ebb and flow depending on different metabolic functions within the body and also depending on exercise. But honestly, for all intents and purposes, it stays pretty level unless you're doing some extreme stuff. So let's take a look at what gluconeogenesis is and where it provides energy from. It provides energy from two different fashions. One is lactate. Okay, I'm not gonna focus too much on lactate in this video because it's a little bit more complex and requires some understanding of the Krebs cycle and some other stuff too. Okay, but lactate is a byproduct of pyruvate. And pyruvate is a product of overall exercise and ATP production. So when you're trying to produce energy because you're working out, you're producing ATP. Thusly, you produce pyruvate and that pyruvate goes through a cycle and ultimately ends up as lactate. You ever hear of lactic acid buildup with a hard workout? That's your lactate. Well, believe it or not, lactate can go through gluconeogenesis and create glucose again. Yeah, literally, that acid that makes your quads burn when you're doing squats, that can be turned back into glucose for more energy. I digress, that's a really cool topic, but for another day. Now, the other way that you produce glucose is from amino acids, which are the building blocks of protein. So when you consume protein, your body breaks them down into amino acids. These amino acids then can get turned into glucose through gluconeogenesis if need be. Now, not all amino acids go through the gluconeogenesis cycle though. Leucine and lysine do not. And I can save those for another video, but I'll touch on one a little bit later in this video too, so you have an understanding there. The big thing that we really need to know is that gluconeogenesis is a metabolically expensive process. What I mean by metabolically expensive is it takes 1.6 grams of amino acids to produce one gram of glucose. Compare that to one gram of glucose being one gram of glucose in a normal carbohydrate fed situation. So you're looking at a situation where your body has to really work hard to produce energy from protein, which is why you can see that if you were to go overboard into gluconeogenesis, you could lose some muscle. Touch on that in a second too. So the job of gluconeogenesis is again, just to keep our blood sugar level. There are specific cells in the body that always require blood sugar. They can never run on ketones. And these are red blood cells, these are kidney cells, and these are the testes, and of course, parts of the brain. You see, even when you're on a keto diet, your brain is only running on ketones for about 70% of itself. The other 30% requires glucose, okay? This means that you can never be solely running on ketones. People will tell you that ketones make your brain feel like it's on fire, but the fact is there's always a mutual energy relationship there. Ketones and a little bit of glucose. Without that glucose, your brain would not function. So gluconeogenesis in the absence of carbohydrates is what is keeping your body functioning. So don't hate on blood sugar all too much. So envision this when you're first starting a keto diet, okay? You just started your keto diet you're eating low carb, high fat, you just got rid of carbohydrates, okay? You haven't quite gotten into keto yet, okay? You haven't started to produce ketones just yet. So what's happening is you have muscle glycogen. You have carbohydrates that are stored inside all your muscles in the body. They're always there. And what happens is in the absence of carbohydrates, your body starts to pull the glucose from the muscles, from the glycogen stores, 
and uses that for energy. But as you start to run out of glycogen, as you start to run out of those stored carbs, the body starts to kind of panic. It goes, wait a minute, we need glucose, but we don't have it in the muscle anymore. So it kickstarts gluconeogenesis, and it upregulates that process so you can still keep your glucose high. But then your body goes into keto, and you start producing ketones. Then a whole different world occurs, because now your body can use ketones and doesn't need to rely on the glucose as much. You have now officially switched your primary fuel source. So here's a study that makes some sense of this. What this study found is that after five or six weeks of being on a low-carb diet, essentially, the body really does shift its gears over to fat, and gluconeogenesis, although upregulated, just becomes a process to balance some things out. So this study was published in the Journal of Endocrinology and Metabolism, and it took a look at three different groups of people. Okay? Each group of people consumed the same amount of calories, but one group consumed 85% of their calories from carbohydrates, another group consumed 44% of their calories from carbohydrates, and another group only consumed 2% of their calories from carbohydrates. All groups consumed 15% of their calories from protein, so they were all equal when it came down to protein. Here's what's interesting. At the end of the study, they found that the ketogenic group, the group that was not consuming a lot of carbohydrates but was consuming a lot of fat and a moderate amount of protein, ended up having lower levels of blood glucose than the other groups, which isn't a huge surprise because they weren't consuming carbs, but they had a 14% increase in gluconeogenesis. Whoa! Okay, so what does this tell us? This tells us that when you're on a keto diet, Gluconeogenesis is already upregulated. You already are utilizing gluconeogenesis at a 14% higher rate than you would be otherwise. So you shouldn't be freaking out. You're already in a higher state of gluconeogenesis and it's not kicking you out of keto. You're always in gluconeogenesis. It's just occurring even more in keto, which would allow you to believe that you're going to be more sensitive to it. But that's not quite the case either. Let me explain. You see, when you're in keto, like I explained before, glucose is no longer your main source of fuel. Fat is now your main source of fuel. So if you increase gluconeogenesis, the extra glucose or carbohydrates that are created through that process aren't going to kick you out of keto. Your body thinks fat is the fuel source. Why would it be interested in the glucose at this point in time? So that extra glucose actually does some really cool things. It prevents hypoglycemia, okay? But it also gets stored as muscle glycogen. Yes, literally. The carbohydrates that are generated from the extra protein get stored as muscle glycogen, which give you fuel for your workouts later on. This is actually miraculous and a really, really cool process, but there's a huge caveat. Huge, okay, pay close attention. If your fats are not high enough, then this causes a problem. Why? Because right now, you're eating enough fats. Your body knows that fat is the fuel source. You're keto adapted. So the extra carbs that come in don't cause an issue. But the moment that your fats start to go lower, your body gets confused. Your body's like, wait a minute, where do I get my fuel? You don't have enough fat to produce ketones anymore, but now all of a sudden you're eating a lot of protein and starting gluconeogenesis. So then, and only then, will too much protein cause the issue because your fat to protein ratio is off. So fats go down, now the body thinks that it can run on glucose again. So whoop de doo it goes ahead and it kicks into gear and it utilizes gluconeogenesis as the primary fuel source and puts fat on the back burner consequently kicking you out of keto and disrupting your fat burning state. That's where the problem occurs. Not from too much protein, too much protein in the absence of the adequate amount of fats. Now the big overarching piece here that we have to understand is it's a hormonal thing more than anything. It comes down to insulin and it comes down to glucagon, keeping our blood sugar balanced all the time. You see, whenever you consume protein, you spike your insulin. People think that you only spike your insulin when you consume carbs. That's not the case. When you consume protein, you spike your insulin too. But insulin isn't one-sided. If you spike insulin, you need to have blood sugar go with it too. It doesn't just shuttle amino acids in. So you spike your insulin by consuming protein, and your body has no choice but to upregulate gluconeogenesis. So what that ends up meaning is your body is going to kickstart that process to produce glucose so that the insulin has something to shuttle in. Okay, envision this. Let me explain it this way. You're on a keto diet, so you have low-ish levels of blood glucose, but not too low. And then all of a sudden, you spike your insulin with some protein. Well, that blood glucose has to get shuttled into the cells because you just spiked your insulin. So in an effort to make sure that your blood glucose stays at a healthy, stable rate, gluconeogenesis kicks in so it can shuttle glucose back into the bloodstream and keep your blood sugar nice and even keeled. 
you shuttled some over into the muscles and reallocated it, so your body has to produce it somehow. So that's where we run into the issue if too much protein that spikes too much insulin can cause a problem. What one protein can do that? Well, it's the amino acid leucine. And that's why I say that branch chain amino acids containing leucine spike the insulin. But if you remember from the beginning of this video, leucine does not affect gluconeogenesis. It does not get converted into the gluconeogenesis cycle. This is very, very complex. But the point is that BCAAs as a supplement can kick you out of keto and too much protein in the absence of fat can kick you out of keto. So this clears some things up, makes it simple. Don't be afraid of the protein. It's only going to get stored in the muscles, but only be afraid of the protein if you're not consuming enough fats with it. Try to aim for at minimum a two to one fat to protein ratio and it'll help you out a lot. But more importantly, stop jacking up your cortisol levels worrying about the protein because honestly, it's the least of your worries. Go focus on a workout and focus on your family instead. As always, make sure you're keeping it locked in here on my channel. If you have ideas for future videos, put them down in the comment section below. We'll see you soon.